Hey collectors, before we get started with this week's concert poster conversation, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content Go Collect has to offer. Hey there collectors, I'm Katie with Go Collect and we're back with Glenn Trosh from Psychedelic Art Exchange for another concert poster conversation. And today we're talking about the poster behind one of the most important events that helped usher in the summer of love in 1967. It's also one of artist Rick Griffin's earliest posters. There's a lot to this, so I'm just gonna have Glenn take it away. Where do I start? Um, the human being was, I guess, uh, the penultimate uh, event of the hippie culture in San Francisco. This really, from what I understand, was really the beginning of the end. What started as very, beautiful, innocent, pure community in 1965, attracted a lot of attention and attracted more attention after this event because the media latched onto it. It was very attractive to kids all across the country. After this, throngs of runaways and wanted to bees came to San Francisco to jump on the scene. Um, and so this happened in January of 1967, correct? Correct. Yes, this was the beginning of 67. And like I say, you know, um, Monterey Pop happened in June of 67. Which and then, you know, then the hate was overrun. And there's that whole story with the, the death of the hippie that we can cover at another <laughs> time. But this was, uh, let's go back to the birth of the hippie. Yes, yeah, the birth the of the hippie, it, it relatively, you could say, started with Jack Kerouac and on the road. Mm -hmm. the, the beat generation and beat literature and the beat aesthetic and jazz was the of, predecessor. Of the 1950s. Yeah, this was, uh, the, and, and the beats in San Francisco lived in North Beach. Um, this is the younger generation of hipster beats and they took up residence in Haight-Ashbury where the rents were lower in these beautiful old Victorians. Mm -hmm. and. That's where this Haight Ashbury culture grew up, and it was very innocent. But uh, and that was but by, by the time you got to '67, it was it was getting overrun, and the bands moved out of the city, and right. then it got descended upon, and you know it was it became mainstream to an extent. So why don't we talk about the specific design here? And I, I wonder if you can just walk us through some of the people that are listed on this poster and how they were important to the event into the counterculture movement. Well, I mean, the design, again, like you said, was Rick Griffin, who mm -hmm. went on to um, be, in many eyes, the greatest poster artist of this era. I mean, some of his stuff is just- He's my favorite. Incomparable. Um, but it's hard to pick favorites. I mean, the, <laughs> there, there were, so, and there were other versions of, there were other uh, right, uh, human being posters. One was done by Mouse and Kelly, which is a great poster too, and a variety of handbills. This is a, a big event, but. And it, yeah, and it was referenced on the, the family, one of the family dog posters as well. Yeah, so in FD43, it talks about the human being. But uh, yeah, I mean, Rick's pen and ink work is amazing. And, you know, the cross hatching, he was just, he was, he was, uh, this was, his second poster in San Francisco. He did uh, mm -hmm. a poster for the psychedelic shop, and then this was his second work. This is '67. Um, where you know you're all familiar with Oxamoxa. That was that was '68, and that was you know when full color and all the great right. you know Griffin art. But this is really it's it's a beautiful, wonderful piece. And yeah, the names uh, read like um, uh, y you know who's who of again the inspiring elements of this culture. Um, the, the, the human bee and gathering of the tribes was, was a coming together. It was bringing together these disparate, or not quasi-disparate groups at the time. There were the Haight-Ashbury hippies, there were the Berkeley radicals, there was the North Beach beats, there was all of this counterculture coming together and that's what the term the gathering of the tribes mm -hmm. was about it brought all of these groups together and it was a big event in golden gate park in the polo fields with all the bands playing and the speakers were i mean you had you know leary and richard alpert who were known for uh you know the lsd experiments at harvard and and millbrook and all of that and you know dick gregory uh -huh. comedian activist uh some of the yippies alan ginsburg you know it was this was this was the event 
where Leary said, turn, turn on, tune in, drop out. And that, and the media got that, and then it was, and that was- Right, the rest is history. Yes. You were talking a little bit earlier about crowd being dosed. I mean, no, the, well, there, there, there is the legend of, of Osley being in the crowd dispersing some of his um, finest work. You know, this is, <laughs> yeah, Osley was in the crowd handing out hits. This was after LSD was made illegal in the state of uh, California, which mm -hmm. I believe was October of 66, if I have my facts correct. Up until then, LSD was legal. I mean, the party really was happening before then. That's, but then things changed when the man started getting suspicious. All right, well, shifting the conversation a little bit to value, talk a little bit about this. How rare is this poster right here? How rare is it? Um, I mean, there are copies out there. It's, it's again, I, I'm sounding like a broken record, but the, 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 you can get these a, a lot cheaper than what I believe their value and importance is. This is a poster you can get for four to six thousand dollars nowadays probably mm -hmm. in this condition. You know, uh, once people catch on to what we're doing, it's it, it, sky's the limit. Once again, relative to other collectibles that sell for millions, this is well, and this is interesting because it's not a really a concert poster as much as well. It, is it was just a, an all event of the San Francisco poster. bands, doesn't it say it on there? All yeah. the bands were there. I mean, this was this was a, a big event, but a concert? No, this was a cultural yeah event. This was a big happening. And I know you mentioned to me a little earlier that you think if it was in color, it would be one of the most beautiful posters. Well, I mean, that's, it's debatable. I, I mean, <laughs> I think, you know, personally, I think that the, the pen and ink work and the black and white is incredible. Um, some of the more colorful Griffin posters are really eye-catching. I mean, but that's what he evolved into. He came from being a, a cartoon artist in Surfer Magazine, so he was working in pen and ink. So this was yeah. his style. Uh, the color thing hadn't happened. He used color better than, oh, well, as, as good as anyone. It was, uh, forgive me for uh, gushing over Griffin. It's you know, no offense going. to anyone else. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, but I, I yeah, that was sort of a, it, it was, that was an obvious statement that, you know, the, that the more colorful posters or, are more obvious and right. people chase down. But this, I mean, the art itself, uh, it's one of his finest works. All right. Yeah. Well, that was an awesome story. If you know anything else about this event that you want us to know, if you have any posters that you want us to cover, please let us know in the comments below the video. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to our concert poster conversations, and we'll see you next time.